And first of my production here in my small studio about Avengers, I want to present about Iron Man, which is, uh, you know, who, who is Iron Man, right? So we wanted to present for the Iron Man part. So we will get the information from YouTube source and then here, here it is. Let's see it together. It's an interesting character for us. We've done Spider-Man, we've done X-Men, we've done superpowers. Many of the Marvel properties have long histories in the power. Iron Man was at least at Fox and New Line. This is how Iron Man is formed. And for whatever reason, you know, the time wasn't right. It's been a different journey for Marvel since it's really their first real venture coming out as a company fully financing and releasing Iron Man and it's a big deal to be a part of this production so much of the company is now invested into this potential franchise which is really what these films are meant to be but we need the story too. John is a talent in many fields from the camera behind the camera when you look at Maid, Elf and Zephyra that's the track of the filmmaker that is nearing the top of this game. But very important for us was him, is his love for Iron Man. That was the movie he wanted to make. Iron Man is one of the comics where you have very few purists who have attached themselves to specific storylines. In the case of Iron Man, it's the myth of Iron Man, it's the suit, it's what the suit could do. Things change from time to time with the suit, but there's a basic character that Tony Stark has and a certain look that the suit has. I went in to meet them and, and then wound up screen testing for Tony Stark for Iron Man. It was like, I went in the building and everywhere you go, there's another movie you loved and the Spider-Mans and everything. I go, God, it'd be really great if I could do one of these. It was kind of like an independent director and cast, but, you know, doing this, this great big film. So it was the best of both worlds. I'm jealous. And this is a marble. This is part of uh, the Marvel offices that they gave us for Iron Man pre-production. Normally, we would, you know, start this, uh, we, would, we would rent some office space near a studio. We're about to move to Playa Vista Studios. Uh, so this is, this allowed us to sort of get a running start and be close to the people who are part of uh, Marvel Studios here. So it was, it was nice. We had these great digs and we got to use the meeting spaces, and we're starting to outgrow this space. Here are some different, um, the evolution of, of concept art for the suit. These are earlier designs that we didn't go with, but they helped evolve the suit into the final look. The suit evolved over decades, and it wasn't until an artist named Adi Kronoff took a whack at the costume and reinvented it that you found a suit that looked more like a uh, solid armor, more like something with a military application, almost like a flying machine and not like a suit that somebody slipped on was skin tight and happened to be metallic. This suit felt real. It felt like something mechanical, something that was tech based. And that was the image that I gravitated towards from the whole packet of 40 years of Iron Man images that was given to me. The suit for the movie is completely different. In my artwork, I tried to make things appear functional, but they're not functional because there isn't a real person inside. We spent months and months trying to figure out how different sections uh, bend and intersect and uh, how there could be a person inside and if he bends his arm it will actually break his bones and I mean all those details like that and then the helmet and how the helmet opens and uh, can the head fit inside the helmet and then does the make the head look too big. I mean, all these things that in a comic book, I mean, I just draw it whatever looks the best. We have uh, basically the uh, the chest piece, which you see on one of the other renderings here. 
the abdomen piece, which would go on sort of like a tank top. You have uh, the uh, boxer shorts sort of area, and then the leg. And the whole idea is to make uh, each of these components expand so that you can just slip into them as one big piece. And then uh, as you put them on, they would collapse and end up snug on the leg. Here's Ryan working on working on some, some keyframe work from the movie of uh, Tony Stark first waking up in captivity. This is the beginnings of some thoughts for the beginnings of the first gray Iron Man suit. So you can see sort of the chest piece. And as you can see, these arm pieces were inspired by this piece of hardware here. This armature that we got from Stan Winston was basically a, a starting point to say how, you know, what are the basic pivot points that you would need uh, to be able to move your arms and have as much flexibility as possible. This is also uh, something that we use to help limit the movement that uh, the performer used when we we're doing some mocap tests for the CGI on it. This is sort of a, a dogfight sequence that happens late in the second act. As we can see, we're sort of cross-cutting between Rhodey, the pilots, and Tony Stark flying. And these are well, it's amazing, movie. right? How they and make uh, the Iron Man. This is part of what was used to. So uh, for a long time in the ener energy. Computer and animated, and you're able to watch it like you would a movie. I think very early on, John had a very compelling vision for how he wanted to cover <laughs> the Iron Man action stuff. He to shoot well, like, I need uh, my Iron own studio on, with uh, you know, professional and, skills, but I didn't, so I just made it in and my office. On camera. The one thing that we still have over previs and animatics is that you can draw a scene really, really quickly, and you can draw changes really, really quickly. And, and well, that bless one day, right? We can make it true. Part of the process to, to find find the vocabulary of the movie and find the, the angles you want and come up with the coolest stuff possible. If anything, that's the comic book artist. He's sort of like, I'm just going to draw and draw and draw. I'm going to make this scene huge, you know, and before you know it, it just expands into something that's absolutely unmanageable, unshootable. It, it'll never go in any schedule. But what you can do from that is take the things in it that you respond to, and that's what John did. So this is... Uh... I was hoping it would be my office, but they made an appeal to me that this was the biggest room, so we had to, we need a room for all the, uh, the previs crew. So you have uh, animators, cat artists, everybody who is involved with taking what we did on the storyboards and translating it into uh, a 3D animation. There are certain shots, like this is a really successful shot here. We like this one a lot. His little lights come on, his flying lights, and they're coming into the Santa Monica Pier. Some of these are a little bit too quick. Some of them are a little bit off. The flow is pretty good, but once we refine it in the previs, it will then translate pretty much one for one with the final film. 